the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, coming together as God's family, in memory of Saint Gregory the Great Pope, let us now, with all humility, acknowledge our sins and ask the Lord for His mercy. I confess, I thank God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Christ of mercy, Christ of mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who care for your people with gentleness and rule them in love through the intercession of Pope St. Gregory, endow, we pray, with the spirit of wisdom, those to whom you have given authority to govern, that the flourishing of the holy flock may become the eternal joy of the shepherds. Through Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, learn from myself and Apollos not to go what beyond what is written, so that none of you will be inflated with pride in favor of one person over against another. Who confers distinction upon you? What do you possess that you have not received? But if you have received it, why are you boasting as if you did not receive it? You are already satisfied. You have already grown rich. You have become kings without us. Indeed, I wish that you had become kings so that we also might become kings with you. For as I see it, God has exhibited us apostles as the last of all, like people sentenced to death. Since we have become a spectacle to the world, to angels and men alike, we are fools on Christ's account, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are held in honor, but we in this dispute. To this very hour, we go hungry and thirsty. We are poorly clad and roughly treated. We wander about homeless and we toil, working with our own hands. When ridiculed, we bless. When persecuted, we endure. When slandered, we respond gently. We have become like the world's rubbish, the scum of all to this very moment. I am writing you this not to shame you, but to admonish you as my beloved children. Even if you should have countless guides to Christ, yet you do not have many fathers, for I became your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. 
The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord keeps all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. May my mouth speak the praise of the Lord, and may all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. the way and the truth and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While Jesus was going through a field of grain on a Sabbath, his disciples were picking the heads of grain, rubbing them in their hands, and eating them. The Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? Jesus said to them in reply, Have you not read what David did when he and those who were with him were hungry, how he went into the house of God, took the bread of offering, which only the priests could lawfully eat, ate of it, and shared it with his companions? Then he said to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. We are familiar with this story in today's Gospel. The disciples were passing by a field of grain and they got hungry. They started picking the grains and eating them. We are also familiar with the attitude of the Pharisees upon seeing this. They passed judgment on the disciples as violating the law of the Sabbath. But before we pass judgment on the Pharisees who passed judgment on the disciples, I'd like you to consider a few situations. You know, in our parish in Quezon City at the, Man at the Minor Basilica of the National Shrine of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, you will see poor people asking for medicines at the office of the social service. We give free medicines to the poor. Some parishioners have actually confronted me with a question. Father, are you sure that those people are not selling the medicines you give them? By this, you actually pass judgment on the people no? because you are saying that they are poor there are poor people who sell the medicines, who sell the drugs to low-class drugstores or to people who are, who are in need of those drugs. There is the unwritten law at the back of our minds that says 
that since these drugs can be sold, therefore, these poor people will sell them. Or maybe a youth in the parish comes to you for help, but you know that this youth comes from a family that is not really hard up. And then you will tell, you, you will tell this youth, your parents should support you. Well, maybe it is true because the unwritten law says that parents should be able to sustain their children. But what if there are other factors involved? What am I trying to say? We still have disciples who violate the law, but we also have people who love the law, who love the people who violate the law. What I am saying is this, when we love, let us not put as a criterion that we will love only those who are obedient to the law. We will love only those who are honest. We will love only the people who are honest. We will love only the poor who obey the law. Are you aware that when God saved us, all of us were disobedient? When God saved us, we were not obedient to the law. And that is why God saved us. The message is this. When you help, do not check whether those who will receive help are obedient or not because God never does that to you. God helps us not because we are good, but because we are in need and God is good. Brothers and sisters, may we learn to help one another, not because they will be grateful. May we learn to help and support one another, not because we like the person, but because we love. Our prayers to the faithful. Jesus defended his disciples who were picking the heads of grain on a Sabbath. The Sabbath is not to burden the human person, but is a time given by God for rest and refreshment of body and soul. Let us pray that the overly burdened may have their load lightened. And so we pray, Lord, give us a heart that understands people's needs. Lord, give us a heart that understands people's needs. May church leaders have the heart of Jesus who is close to the simple and unlearned, the poor and the wayward. We pray. Lord, give us a heart that understands people's needs. May judges and law enforcers have recourse to the spirit behind the law rather than its literal interpretation. We pray. Lord, give us heart that understands people's needs. May we refrain from loading on others the burden that we ourselves cannot or un are unwilling to carry. We pray. Lord, give us heart that understands 
May the Christian Sabbath, Sunday, the day of the Lord, be a time of rest, family togetherness, and enjoying God's creation. We pray. Lord, give us a heart that understands people's needs. May we always remember that the good of the human person is the highest law, and that love does no harm to anyone. We pray. Lord, give us a heart that understands people's needs. In the silence of our hearts, let us now pray for our personal intentions. We pray. Lord, give us a heart that understands people's needs. Merciful Father, you provide time and season in all affairs in the world. Teach us to spend our time wisely for your greater glory and for our neighbor's good. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice and earnest for the grace and glory of His name, for our good and for all His holy Grant our supplication, we pray, O Lord, that the sacrifice we present in celebration of St. Gregory may be for our good, since through its offering, you have loosed the offenses of all the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For us on the festival of St. Gregory, you bid your church rejoice. So too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed, Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Patricio, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under life, but only say the word and my soul shall be For those who are joining our live stream celebration, let us now pray the spiritual communion prayer. O oh my Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament. I love you and I desire you to come into my heart. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you. O oh, never leave me. May the burning and most sweet power of your love consume me, that I may die for you who died for love of me. Amen.
Let us pray. Through Christ, the teacher, O Lord, instruct those you feed with Christ, the living bread, that on the feast day of St. Gregory, they may learn your truth and express it in works of charity through Christ our Lord. Horatio Imperata. Merciful and compassionate Father, we confess our sins and we humbly come to you to find forgiveness and life. We come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death. Restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Bless our efforts to use the medicines developed to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God, do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Sebastian, pray for us. Saint Roque, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Calungsod. Pray for Saint us. Saint Gregory the Great. Pray for us.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen. May He let His face shine upon you and show you His mercy. Amen. May He turn His countenance towards you and give you His peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks.